Every morning when you wake up, no matter what your routine is, there's a pretty good chance that at some point you'll glance at your phone to check the weather. This one little action seems so insignificant and yet it's mind-boggling how much effort goes into making that quick glance even possible. From radar to weather satellites to massive arrays of sensors, enormous amounts of information about our planet is constantly being collected. Also you'll know if you'll need an umbrella or sunscreen today. Of course, all of this data gets put to other uses, like studying climate change and predicting more serious storms, but it's still impressive just how much data gets processed before the local weather reporter tells you it's going to be partly cloudy with a chance of rain. What most people don't realize, however, is that a lot of this information can be accessed directly from the devices collecting it. In a previous video, we looked at four weather satellites and how we can receive signals from them using some homemade equipment and a software-defined radio. However, in that video, I wasn't able to go through how the received signals can be decoded and converted from audio into images. In this video, we'll be going through that process for both NOAA satellites and Meteor M2. Specifically, we'll be using only programs that have a GUI and require no fancy installations to make things easier and as user-friendly as possible. Doing it this way isn't particularly efficient, but serves to show the whole process and how everything works. In a future video, we'll be going through the slightly more complex, but faster and more efficient methods for this. First, let's start with the NOAA satellites. Last time, I used a Hack RF as my SDR, but this time I'm using the much less expensive Nuelec Nesder Smart, and it works really well for the price. I'm also using a cross dipole antenna, just like the last video. As I mentioned in the last video, NOAA satellites transmit an analog signal that sounds like a rhythmic beeping. If the signal quality is sufficiently high, you can also hear a metronome-like sound as well. Here I'm using SDR Sharp to control the SDR dongle and record the audio. You'll want to make sure that only audio is selected in the recording panel as we won't need the baseband for this. The signal is about 50 kHz wide, so adjust the selector accordingly. You'll want to leave some extra wiggle room on either side because as the satellite moves it undergoes Doppler shift. We could get around this using a tracker to keep the frequency centered, but we'll go over that in a future video. When the pass is over and when you're done recording, we can click stop and move on to decoding. By default, the file will save in the same folder that all the files for SDR Sharp are stored in. You'll want to rename it so that you know what it is and move it to a new folder. For the actual decoding, we need two programs. The first is called Audacity, and the second is WXTIMG. In SDR Sharp, when we record the audio, the sample rate is too low for the decoding program, so we need to change the sample speed. That's where Audacity comes in. Open it up and load in the recording. In the bottom left, there's a drop-down menu called Project Rate. Change it to 11025. Then in the top menu, click on Tracks, then Resample, and again set it to 11025 before clicking OK. When that's done, we can export our converted audio. Save it somewhere convenient and give it a name so you know it's the process file. Now we can open up WX to IMG. The program takes a few seconds to open and when it does, load in the converted audio file we just made. The program will process the audio and when it's done you'll see both channels from the satellite. And that's it! Congratulations, you've just decoded an image from a weather satellite. NOAA satellites are nice because even a weak signal will still give you some part of the image, even if it's a bit choppy. However, because the signal is analog, the image quality is pretty low because you can't encode that much information. Now that we know the basics, let's try something a little more difficult. The Russian Meteor M2 satellite, unlike the older NOAA satellites, broadcasts a modulated digital signal. Because of this, we lose a lot of the simplicity we had with the NOAA satellites, but the trade-off is way more data and higher image quality. First off, in SDR Sharp, we can't just record the audio as we did before. The signal needs to stay centered the whole time, and we need to demodulate it live. This requires installing some plugins to SDR Sharp. Alternatively, to keep it simple, we can just record the baseband. For this video, we'll be doing the latter, but the trade-off is we'll be recording a lot more information, and our file sizes will be much larger. When we revisit this, I'll show how to use the plugins, which will save us time and allow us to record smaller files. Expect that a good pass will be in the range of 2 to 4 gigabytes of data with this method. When the satellite is high enough in the sky to get a good clean signal, start the recording. When you've collected 2 gigabytes of data, the recording will automatically turn off, so be sure to keep an eye on it and start it again if it stops before the satellite is set. The process for converting our recording into an image goes like this. First, we'll again be using Audacity to resample the audio. Then, we'll be using a program called LRPTRX to demodulate the signal, 
at a program called LRPT Offline Decoder to decode the signal. Then we'll use two programs to process the image further. The first is called Smooth Meteor, and the second is called LRPT Image Processor. I've included links to all of these in the description below. Let's get started by opening up Audacity. This time we need to resample the track to 130,000 Hz. Again, make the change in the drop-down menu in the bottom left and resample the track before exporting. It's a big file, so this might take a few minutes. When the satellite takes an image, the information is stored as a series of ones and zeros called bits. In order to be broadcast, the bits need to be encoded as variations in the electromagnetic waves of the radio signal. This conversion process is called modulation, and Meteor uses something called 4QPSK modulation. To encode data in a wave, we need to vary it in some pattern that we can easily recognize and convert back. The most common way to do this is changing the phase of the wave or the amplitude. This is called phase shift keying and amplitude shift keying, respectively. We'll be demodulating the signal with a program called LRPTRX. Using it is pretty straightforward. In the input field, select the file that we just converted in Audacity, and in the output field, choose a name and location for the demodulated file. Once that's done, just hit run. The program won't stop on its own, so keep an eye on it and hit stop when it's done. If everything is working properly, the constellation diagram should show four clean dots. Finally, we can move on to the actual decoding and get our image. Open up LRPT Offline Decoder and click 72K. Find the file that LRPTRX created and load it in. It'll be in the .raw format. Then click start. As it decodes, the image will start to appear. Since we're only receiving the low frequency broadcast, we only get data for three channels, two visible and one infrared. Once the decoding is finished, we'll want to export our image. To do that, we first have to set the red, green, and blue channels to each be one of the three channels that we just received. Here I'm setting red to 0.5 to 0.7, green to 0.7 to 1.1, and blue to 10.5 to 11.5. This will make for an image that looks kind of weird, but it'll get better shortly. One thing you'll notice about this image is that the sides look kind of bunched together. This has to do with the camera on the satellite, and we'll be fixing this with a program called Smooth Meteor. It's one of the only programs that actually requires an installer, but it's very straightforward. Follow the instructions on screen, and once it's installed, open it and load in our weird looking image. Smooth Meteor will try and adjust the colors of the image to look realistic, but for now we don't want that. So in the color scheme menu, select None. Then in the processing menu, click Rectify. This will stretch the image proportionally and make it look more natural. Save the rectified image, and we're ready to move on to the final step. Finally, we'll use LRPT Image Processor to convert the weirdly colored image into versions that are more visually appealing and useful. Running it does require installing a set of runtimes from the author's website, but it's very easy to do. Again, it's just a quick installer and you're done. Click the link in the description to get to the download page. Open up LRPT Image Processor and load in the stretched image we just made. As soon as the image is loaded in, the program automatically makes a series of different versions of the image using the information stored in the red, green, and blue channels we set up earlier. The ones I like the most are RGB 122, which gives a very realistic looking image, and Thermal, which shows the temperature of the things in the image. But there are also some that show the concentration of vegetation and a few others. And with that, we're done! LRPT Image Processor automatically saves each of the versions in the same folder you loaded your image from. So save the ones you like and delete the ones you don't. Before I wrap up this video, I want to talk about a chance for collaboration. With this video and the last, you're armed with almost all of the knowledge you'll need to receive transmissions like this, and get beautiful images of the Earth. Many of you are spread all over the world, and as such this makes for a very exciting opportunity. If even a small fraction of you build antennas and start receiving images, it would be possible to collect images of almost the entire world. So what I want to do is collect as many images as possible and stitch them together. I want to essentially make a citizen version of Google Earth. I know there's a project like this already, but I want to see how far we can get with just the awesome members of this community. For this, I'm mostly interested in images from Meteor so we can have as high res of a version as possible, but no images are okay too. So if you follow these tutorials and start collecting images, send them to thethoughtemporium at gmail.com. As I collect more and more images, I'll be stitching them together and putting the results up on my website. To make this easier, I'll be turning this and the last video into an instructable, so you can follow along or troubleshoot if you get stuck. 
I'll be including instructions for the command line tools as well, even though that video won't be up for a little while. The instructable won't be up on the day the video first goes live, but it will be up within a few days, so check back for that. As always, be sure to check the description for links to everything I mentioned in this video and the link to that instructable. I'm excited to see how much we can do, and how much of the world we can see. And with that, it's finally time to wrap up this video. As always, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to subscribe and consider clicking the bell to get email updates when I post new videos. A big thank you as always to all of my patrons who continue to help make these videos possible. As soon as I have 10 patrons, I'll be starting bi-monthly Q&A videos, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.